Hello, it's Kathy here. I wanted to create a little video for you today about how to create a sort of a digital vision board. Now, this is something that I created kind of like by chance, really. I was um, I was on another program, and we part of that was to create a sort of create a, a flat digital vision board, like as a, a still picture and uh, where you kind of you're collecting obviously lots of different images and you put them on but what i did was i decided i would put all of these loose images into a folder and use it on my screen saver so that whenever i'm my computer is lying still and not being used up comes my screen saver and these images they start rotating so i get to see them a lot and it's um but there's more to it than that the thing is about this particular vision board this is about getting in touch with your really big dream like the thing that you think is just uh so far away or almost impossible or but it also excites the pants off you so it's about getting really focused and very clear and intentional and so my vision had been about uh, i've about three years ago i had a sort of download uh, with an outline of a series of books. And I know what the content is and the kind of the feel of it. And I know that the character is about and the, the kind of uh, where it's set and a whole lot of different information. I just haven't written it yet. But um, so that came to me and I thought, well, I'm not a writer. I've never written a novel before. Um, I, you know, I'd thought about writing maybe a book based on um, consciousness that's more sort of factual, non-fiction, but I'd never thought about writing a fiction story. And then, but the thing is, right, with with business books as well, with the, with a book that um, you know, every every coach tells you if you're a business owner, oh, you should have a book. It's a great marketing tool. So that had been in my mind. But also, you there isn't there just a glut of books out there now, and it's like, uh, I don't know, it's like white noise. Everybody has a book, so I wanted to create something that was different, something that was that would capture people's imagination and give them something, like take them on a journey. Um, and so that that was the premise for the, for the book, I guess. But. Um, this story came to me like three or four years ago and it won't leave me alone. It keeps sort of popping up in my consciousness and it's like, okay, there's obviously something in this because, because I really didn't know if I could write a book. Um, and the other thing was, I was thinking, where does this fit in, in terms of, um, the market? Um, and I was looking, I was actually in America when, uh, this kind of download came for me and, I got this guidance to go to one of the big bookshops in California. I was looking through all of the different titles and the authors and where does my book fit? And it sort of fits in the bracket with Paolo Coelho and there was no female equivalent that I saw there of Paolo Coelho. And I was thinking that really resonated. I was thinking, okay, Matt, that's a massive dream to think that I could write a book that would be sitting on this kind of um, bookshelf. So anyway, I I sort of popped that dream in a book and then never got onto it. And then it came up again last year. And so this time I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna see how can I um, how can I develop this. And then first of all, what happened was I came across a folder, an old folder of mine, uh, of a short story that I'd written like 15 years ago. And when I read it, I, I was like captivated. Or It was a page turner. I mean, it was only a short thing. It's like 15 minutes. But I think partly because I was intrigued because I'd forgotten what I'd written. But also, it, it really wasn't that bad. It was quite good. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I've got, maybe there's something I've got here. And you know, so this is pretty nice sign of self-belief, I suppose you'd call it. So I thought, okay, I'm really going to go for this. I'm going to see if I can uh, develop this creative writing skill. I know I can write blogs and things like that, but um, I didn't know if I could do the creative stuff. So what I did was um, 
I had that very clear vision then. I knew what my book title was called, and, and it's actually a series of uh, maybe even three or four books. And I also had that really strong, clear picture of me as a writer, and I could see where I was writing. Um, like years ago, I read, I think it was The Barefoot Doctor, I remember him writing something in one of his books where he talks about when he writes books, he's up in the mountains in Spain, and, and it's like a a place where he gets inspired and that had always stuck with me. Um, but when I was kind of visualizing myself as a writer, I saw myself surrounded by rolling green hills and, and uh, low trees and things like this. And there was a balcony uh, that I was looking out from. And I started looking for these images online and also I've got a feeling that the, a lot of this book wants to be channeled through me. So I've been collecting pictures of like, uh, of, of things that might represent that too, like angels or magic or just kind of like visual uh, signs that are really personal to me that when I see them, something shifts in me. So this process of uh, collecting images is really important. You have, when you collect your images, when you're clear about your vision, these images have to really zing they have to um, kind of like touch you emotionally and lift you and you'll feel it in your body. And that's when you know that they've got some power. So, uh, I, so I went and just like surfed through the net, through all the images and on Google images and all kinds of different places, Pinterest, whatever. And when I'd got them all, I weeded out the ones that uh, really didn't fit. And then I put all the others into a folder. And I also went on to Canva, which is a, like a, a, a free graphics program. And I put uh, all the images also into a grid, into a sort of framework. So I've got a flat image of, of all of the images together. So now when, I, um, when my screen goes on to screensaver mode, it's hooked up to this folder and it then revolves through the images. And so, and, I'm getting sort of dosed with this every day, multiple times a day when my computer's sitting, not doing anything. And uh, when, like a few months on, so that would have been November when I actually started doing that. And then last month, um, my I heard from my estate agent that my tenancy agreement is not going to be renewed by my landlady. I'm in this beautiful flat in a beautiful, part of Hertfordshire which I'm was you know really settled in and, and happy but and I, so I was really gutted and then I was like no hang on a minute I've been asking in the universe for a lot of things recently there's got to be something really good is going to come out of this although you know for an hour or so I was having a I was in a really sad and feeling oh no I'm going to have to find somewhere to live what a hassle what a cost all of that sort of you know having a proper pity party um but I was like no this there's got to be a really good reason for this and I'm going to look on the bright side and then the next morning I was telling my friends about this and uh, one of them then said I'm looking for someone to house sit for me for six months in Portugal. And uh, I was thinking, wow, that's amazing. Uh, uh, but I also thought, no, I wasn't planning to go for six months. Uh, that sounds far too long. Um, and then it sort of dropped in. It's like, oh, hang on a minute. I've been wanting to get away to somewhere quiet to write this book because I haven't been able to do it here when I'm working and I'm sort of like, you know, doing client work, it's, I can't, I find it really difficult to sit down and write my book. I need to be really focused and just give space to one thing at a time. That's just how I work. And um, so suddenly here's an opportunity to write my book. Um, and I was like, oh my God, yes. I was sort of yes before she was sort of given any more details. And then she showed me with, she was on Zoom like I'm on at the moment now. And she gave me a tour around her house and uh, outside. And, it, and, the, and I showed her the screen set, the, a screenshot of um, the images I'd been collecting. And she was like, I think that's Portugal. And she showed me it and it looked almost identical. So, you know, this 
this way of having a digital vision board that's something that's moving that captures your catches your eye because it's always moving that maybe that for me is why vision boards normally don't work because they just sit on the wall and I become blind to them uh, whereas when they're moving and also when you're you know if you if you do a, a really deep meditation or something that connects you with your with that really clear vision so your heart's engaged with it and then you'd go from that space to start collecting all of those images rather than just randomly picking any old mag uh, picture as from a magazine. It's actually specifically for your vision. And then you put them in, into, um, um, into a program that keeps them revolving. So you see them a lot. That's really influencing your unconscious mind. So maybe that's what's happened, but um, we shall see. But if you'd, uh, if you'd like any help with manifesting, if you if you've got things that you want to move into in, and change in your life, or you're just really passionate about growth and seeing what what else is possible for you, you know, in order to do that, to make a vision board word, work, to make a vision board work, you have to clear what's in the way first in order for you to draw in what it is that you're looking for and that's the work that I do so if you want to find out any more about that then just do please get in touch with me and uh, let's have a chat that's it from me for today and I'll see you next time bye